Good morning, everyone. Happy to be with you. If we could, let's begin our time together as we always do with a prayer. So if we could all please close our eyes. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Saksat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I humbly bow to my Gurudev, Paramahamsa Hariharananda. I humbly bow to my Guruji, Paramahamsa Pragyanananda. I humbly bow to our line of Kriya Yoga masters. I humbly bow to saints and sages of all religions. I humbly bow to all the divine incarnations in every place and in every time. I humbly bow to the people of the whole world and especially to each one of you. And I bow to God, God who is our heavenly father, our divine mother, our closest friend, our innermost self. Lord, today I offer this special prayer and I know that Everyone with me here today will join in offering this special prayer to you for the birthday of our beloved Guruji, Paramahamsa Pragyananda. In two days' time will be Guru, Guruji's birthday. And Lord, we send you our thanks for his presence in our lives. We ask that you bless him deeply, Bless him with extreme long life, good health, energy, and may he constantly feel our love that we pour out towards him. Happy birthday, Guruji. Thank you, Lord. Om. Amen. So, our Guruji Pragyanananda's birthday coming up very soon. Before I start talking about the topic, um, I was thinking for a moment as uh, I was waiting to start the talk <clears throat> about the days way back when I first was with our Gurudev Hari Harananda. Um, I met him in 1988, and for a few years back in those days, you know, there was, wasn't much of an organization at that time. It was still in the West in its infancy. There was no, obviously, internet at that time. We had no websites. We had no easy way for group connections. Um, when we would have any kind of program. I mean, I would literally sit and stuff flyers in envelopes and mail them out to people who had previously shown interest in taking initiation. I mean, this is, if we think about it in today's terms, it was kind of primitive. And I used to worry sometimes at that time, Gurudev is pretty old. What's going to happen if he leaves his body? He, to me, he was my connection to God. He was my connection to spiritual life. And in addition to loving him wholeheartedly, I also worried, what happens if he's not here? What then? Everything just disappears and, and crumbles. Now, looking back all these years later, it's so beautiful how Gurudev, during his time with us um, in the body, he grew and grew the organization. 
and started some ashrams here in the West and guided us along so beautifully, so gently, so quietly in some ways, and then brought us our Guruji Pragyananda to continue his work and to not only grow our, our, our Kriya family and our organization more, but really it has exploded over the entire world with the ashrams he's begun, the, the people that he has taught and the, the souls that he has inspired to follow the path that, that we're all on. So Hari Harananda said when he was telling everyone that Pragyananda would be his successor that what was started by me will be completed by him. And so I can't express my gratitude and my love to Pragyananda enough for what he's done for all of us. And these days, in one way, it's a little difficult that he's maintaining silence because we all love to hear him talk. We love to interact with him. We love his laugh and his smile and his sense of humor and, of course, his deep wisdom that he constantly shares. But it has occurred to me that right at this moment of difficulty and trials in, in the whole world, that in his silence, he is in some way that's beyond my understanding, helping us all on a deeper, more subtle level, on a, you could say, different plane of existence than is in our conscious awareness. So blessings to, to Guruji, thanks to Guruji, and happy birthday. <clears throat> so today, the, the topic that came to my mind is out of the mind into the soul. You know, there's an expression, I'm going out of my mind, which usually means I'm going crazy, I'm stressed out, and and uh, I think we could all uh, stand to get out of our minds to get away from that, because obviously over the last year and a half, in addition to the normal uh, challenges of life, there's been a very extraordinary challenge across the planet. And um, our prayers are with those people who are still suffering so greatly in this pandemic at this stage. But the topic actually is a result of the experience that I have had using Zoom over this last year and a half. So I wanna start talking a little bit about Zoom itself. And if you all kind of stay with me, this will connect and, and lead us in, into the topic that, uh, that Zoom inspired me to talk about today. So if you think about this pandemic, the way we've been cut off from each other, not being able to physically be together at programs and retreats, even not be able to be together in our local groups for group meditation, this certainly could have been a very, very isolating time and could have really eroded a lot of the spiritual community that Gurudev and Guruji have built over the last several decades. I think we owe a lot of gratitude to the technology of Zoom for what it's given us as a means to stay connected as human beings and as a spiritual family. It's really quite miraculous if you think that this technology emerged you know, relatively in the same time, at least in the same era, as this you know, once in a couple hundred year pandemic. And the people in our Kriya organization who oversee our use of technology, 
and facilitate using something like Zoom, um, really, really jumped on this right from the beginning. And using this technology has been a way for us to feel connected through the whole thing as a spiritual family and not feel alone. I have seen that and felt it on our local level. I've seen it and felt it nationally in talks like this. I see it and feel it internationally when uh, occasionally I give talks to our Kriyavans in South America. And, you know, you look and see who's joining in on any given talk on any given day. There can be people from any place in the world. So it's really beautiful. And it's also given us the opportunity to stay in touch with our ashrams, to stay in touch with with our swamis and, and to see them and to hear them and to be able to see and be with Guruji. Some of these live streams that have come from the different events, when you're sitting there watching it live, you, you really do feel that you are right there with him. And that sense of connection is there. So the connectedness that this Zoom has allowed us to maintain by seeing each other, hearing each other face to face, but it's also allowed us to continue giving teachings to existing Kriyavans and to aspiring Kriyavans also. And being able to share teachings, share spiritual ideas, to grow intellectually in our understanding of spiritual life is also very um, important. And this has been continued through the use of this technology. So Zoom is a wonderful uh, tool that we've been using. But let me share with you the experience that I've had with my local group here in Rochester that led me to the thought of this talk. It actually, it did more than that. It, it didn't just lead me to the, the idea for, to give this talk for a little bit this morning. It really, the experience with Zoom and our group highlighted for me a very core aspect of our spiritual practice and that we should all be very conscious of as we're trying to work our way down the spiritual path. So what happened when this first, the pandemic first came along and we had to stop having in-person meditations, we very soon after substituted a weekly Zoom get together at the same time on the same evening that we would normally have had our group meditation. And at first it was, just a means for us to check up on each other as friends and say to each other, are you okay? Is there anything you need? Um, can we get you anything? I mean, we all remember those days, the, the shelves and grocery stores were empty. People were completely out of some of the uh, essential things that they needed in their households. So that it was a means to just say, you know, does anybody need any help? Is everybody doing okay? And to sort of stick together through the really, really uh, difficult beginning part of this when so much was unknown. So after a while, we decided that, you know, not only will we just use this time to check in with each other, but let's, you know, sit and practice a little general meditation together so we can, um, continue our practice. After a while, we said, well, why don't we incorporate some sort of spiritual discussion, some sort of conversation uh, about a spiritual topic in, in with this session. And then the idea came to me to suggest, why don't we all take turns bringing a topic for the week? And anyone can volunteer. You don't have to if you don't want to, but people would volunteer. And so each, each week, someone would bring a, a spiritual quote or thought or question or idea to share with the group or some kind of reading to share with the group. And then we would 
discuss that as a group. We would still, you know, when we first logged on, check in with each other just as, as friends and see how everyone was doing, see what's happening with their families and, and catch up with each other. But then we would have this spiritual discussion time and then we would have a meditation at the end. And sometimes the meditations started growing shorter and shorter because we would get into very, very long, in-depth um, conversations about whatever topic. And I like doing this. I've always liked doing it whenever I'm sitting with any of you, any of you at the ashram or in a program someplace. I love the interchange. Like today where I'm just like sitting and talking at everyone, not my favorite thing. I like it better when we can have a back and forth conversation because throughout all my years in Kriya, I have always observed that the people that are part of our Kriya family are a bunch of people who are highly intelligent, highly educated, have deep insights about things and many, many wonderful thoughts and ideas to share about the spiritual journey that, that we're on together. So I would, and, and the interchange would take the conversations in places and in directions that just couldn't be foreseen and, and very, very often really beautiful and really interesting uh, directions. So what started happening after a while is because these conversations got so good, they would quite often take up pretty much our whole Zoom time together and we might wind up having a five or 10 minute uh, meditation at the end. So ultimately what happened, I started getting some feedback from the members of the group that, um, you know, we would rather just greet each other maybe have me say a couple of short things about some, some spiritual thought and then spend most of our time in meditation. So that's what we've changed to at this point. So I thought about it. I thought we were having, you know, really fantastic conversations. Um, generally people like it when they're included in things that they're not just, I'm not just saying to them, sit there and listen to me, you know, um, so what, what was the root reason for people feeling this way? And not, I'm not saying necessarily everyone felt this way. Some people maybe were very happy with the way it was, but it was an interesting sort of, um, feeling that was coming through to me. So I reflected on it a little bit. And what I realized is, is what I want to share with you is, is a very, very core part of our spiritual life is that as we were spending more and more time in conversation and going into deep analysis of, of the meaning of a Sanskrit word or, um, you know, back and forth over how to interpret some sort of spiritual teaching, we were just being more and more and more immersed in our minds. And whether people realize it consciously or not, it's my feeling, my humble sort of assessment of things, that deep down what gave that um, little bit of feeling of unease with, with what we were doing was that our spiritual practice, our direction that we're trying to go is to get out of our minds and into our souls. So hence the topic for today's talk. Talking about spiritual topics and, and dissecting Sanskrit words and dissecting scripture and all that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Please don't under, don't misunderstand me. It's a wonderful thing. It's a, it's a, Spirituality is a vast and extremely interesting topic, and many things are learned through conversation about it, through reading about it, um, and that is a necessary part 
of our path because Gurudev would often say, we are not to follow blindly, we are to have understanding of what we're doing, right? But he would also say that if all you do is spend your time reading books about spirituality, then what you wind up being is a bookworm, not realized, because you're spending all of your time in the intellect, in the mind. And Baba would say that what we need is practice. He would say, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes you perfect, meaning that it is the practice of our meditation, of our Kriya in daily life, that is taking us out of our mind, which we normally are completely identified with, and shifting that identification to the soul, to the living presence of God within us. And I realized that as valuable in one way as our spiritual conversations were with the group, that there was wisdom that was being presented to me that I had to be aware of that, that yes, we should be spending more of our time meditating together as a group. As we all know, the power of group meditation is so important because the, the, the consciousness, the energy of everyone sitting together pools together and brings everyone up together. They say, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. It's like that in group meditation. It's easier to meditate deep, more deeply and more quietly when you're in a group. We all help each other in that regard. So it really illustrated to me this central idea that what we're trying to do in our spiritual life and as, our grow, as we're growing as yogis is to try to get out of our minds and more into our souls, meaning instead of thinking that this mind, this personality, this body, this particular incarnation that I am in at this moment is me, is the truth of who I am. Instead of being completely identified with that, as I think pretty much, you know, 99.99% of the planet is, as yogis, we're trying to move towards identifying that the real us, the real I inside of each of us is actually the soul, which is no different than the one. The soul, a somewhat individualized portion of God, but eternally one and not different than God. Our Guruji Pragyananda used to describe it as, imagine a balloon. The air inside the balloon is the same as the air outside of the balloon. This is like the soul. Pop the balloon and it's all the same air and it never was anything different than the same air. It was just somehow a slightly individualized portion of the air. So we live our lives so much completely in the grip of our minds. And for me personally, this has been a great reminder of what I need to work on too. You know, so many of the things that happen to, to us as Kriyavans and as yogis, as we're going through life, it's so many things it's like hold, holds up a mirror and says, okay, there's the stuff you're supposed to be working on personally. 
you know, and for me, I, I feel it as much as I'm sure so many of you do that, that my mind is just, just has a grip on me that this is who I am. This is my identity and trying to gradually let that go and, and release it and open from it and feel the presence of soul as Gurudev used to say within and start to realize that, no, wait, this is me. Or if you think of it in terms of the presence of God, you can say, Lord, it is thee who are me. So how to get there? <laughs> we don't know how many incarnations human beings have been in this state where we are fully identified with our minds and bodies and thinking that's all there is. It is also the prevailing state of overall human consciousness on the planet. So we are part of that also. So you could say it seems like kind of an uphill battle and sometimes it feels like kind of an uphill battle, especially because your mind is connected to your emotions. And sometimes in life, we feel anxieties, we feel depression, we feel despair, especially during times we've gone through lately as, as, a, as a human race. And things that happen to us in our own personal lives. But that only serves to show us again in the mirror that this is our place where we're stuck and that this is what we need to work on. It doesn't all of a sudden make it better and go away and all of a sudden make it easy, but at least it shows us, aha, this is where I need to try to get a little more free. This is the underlying idea of detachment. It's not about being cold and heartless detachment. It's about being free and you can be free and be compassionate and full of love. So to shift our identification, one way is to practice during the, your daily life what Gurudev has taught us from day one, Kri and Ya. Kri is any activity that we're doing, whether it's physical or whether there are thoughts in our head. And Ya is, as Baba said, the indwelling self, the soul, the presence of God within us. So to try to remember always to feel, to have that mindfulness. Mindfulness is a modern word but it's pointing us to the exact same thing. Just as Baba would tell us, just to watch, to watch that God is moving through you. God is doing through you. It is that presence within you that is why you are alive, that is why you are taking each breath, that is why you are breathing. And realize that it is not some other presence, God is not something other that's in you doing this through you. God is you. That is who you are. Each one of us is a manifestation of the one. And we have to realize that that identity is what we discover when we start to draw ourselves away a little from the thinking mind and quiet the thinking mind. So watching, feeling that presence in us as we're doing our daily activities, but then in our meditation, in our meditation practice is where we can really have the direct experience of this. That is why Gurudev, why he so strongly talked about practice all of the time. And I think the reason why so many of us were so attracted to him and attracted to Guruji, because they weren't just talking about what you do, they were showing us what to do and helping us and guiding us to do something that actually 
was real and was practical and actually did something to us so that we could have direct experience of the things that so many others just talk about. And again, the talking and thinking, well, helpful and necessary in our spiritual development ultimately is always in the mind and in the intellect. So our practice, whether it's in our daily life or our meditation, takes us into the experience, which makes it real. So what I would like to do is spend a little time right now actually doing it and not staying in the, our minds and intellects and talking about it right? Not to do the exact same thing I was just talking about. We should try to be, you know, shifting away from a little. So if we could, why don't we all close our eyes, get comfortable, sit together for a little time as the spiritual family that we are. Using this beautiful medium of Zoom through which we can feel our closeness with each other. Just sit there and feel the closeness of your brothers and sisters, your spiritual family all around you. The distance, physical distance disappears completely. We're meeting on a different level. And for the meditation experience, begin by relaxing your body. You know what the feeling of contentment is in your body, even if it's not there right at the moment. So just remember that feeling of contentment in the whole body and allow it to arise. Body settling in, settling in. Allow the mind to start to slow down, just inwardly feel slowing down, slowing down. Right at this time, nothing else to do, nowhere else to be. And then some awareness of the gentle incoming breath and outgoing breath. And if you are someone who already practices Kriya, or even if not, you may be able to perceive it. Listen inside, listen inside the head for the divine sound, the Om sound, which can manifest in 
many, many different ways, a ringing sound, sound of bells, a rumbling low sound. Then feel inside also either inside the top of the head or in the whole body, some kind of movement sensation, some kind of pulsation or vibration, gentle rocking sensation, And then again in the top of the head or in between the two eyebrows, see if any kind of light is appearing, smoky, hazy light or some other manifestation of a pattern of light. The breath is the physical manifestation of the living presence of God. The light, the sound, the vibration are the very subtle manifestations of the presence of God. The first energies emerging from the formless to manifest this form. So you're sitting calmly. Whatever is appearing to your awareness, whether it is light, sound, vibration, or the breath. Just let them draw you in, draw you more inside, more into quietness of the mind. As you are observing the breath or the light sound vibration, whatever is coming through to you, what is happening? First, it is bringing you more and more into the present moment. The more focused in the present moment, the less mind there is because you're not thinking about memories from the past and you're not thinking about anticipation of the future. So be right here, right now. Light, sound, vibration, breath, 
and deeper and deeper calmness. So moving into the present moment moves us more out of the mind and into the presence of soul. And then next, what else is happening? You have entered the witnessing consciousness. You are the witness, the observer, the watcher. You are observing the breath, observing the light sound vibration, but you are also observing the state of the body. Is there tension somewhere in the body? Let it relax. Just watch it. What is the condition of the mind? Observe it, watch it. Is it quiet? Are thoughts arising? Allow it to settle more. So you are in the present moment, in the consciousness of the witness, the watcher. If you are watching the body and watching the mind, are you not something other than the body and the mind? How can something watch itself? You're in the soul. And the more we settle into it, the more peace and calmness is there because this is home. This is our identity. This is who we really are. The body and the mind are tools for us to function on this plane of existence. But Baba would say when he was guiding meditation to forget, forget them, forget they exist. He would say, in this beautiful voice, he would say, you don't know your existence. And not to be afraid to lose the identification of who we have always thought we were because we're gaining all of infinity. We're becoming, we're realizing that we are everything. Not that we're going into nothing, Now, we'll take it one step further. Do you feel as if you're trying to meditate? That you're trying to have love for God, love for gurus? 
feel like you're trying to be still and and that you're doing a meditation, this is the next thing to let go of, the trying, the doing. Don't try, don't do, just be. Just be the soul, be the stillness. Just be love. Be what you truly are. This is our meditation to just sit in the stillness and just be. And slowly begin to feel a little awareness, either in the top of the head or in the body. And as you regain some body sense, you can Perceive that the body is there waiting to function. You can perceive that the mind is also there ready to function. But you can feel that there is something else there. That infinite 
presence that is the real you. So that is our path as yogis to try to stay more in contact with that. Even though our minds and our bodies in the external world constantly pulls us away from that awareness and is so loud and bright and full of stuff we have to deal with, that it's not always easy, but we have the guidance and protection of our Kriya gurus, and we have the tools and the understanding to work on it. And that's all we can do. Keep working in that direction. We have moments of peace and bliss. We have moments of difficulties in life. And Gurudev used to just say, you must proceed forward. So we'll stick together, all of us, helping each other to proceed forward. So with eyes remaining closed, as Guruji has said is good for us to do, I will chant the mantra a couple times at the end. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushtivardhanam Urva Ruka Miva Bandanan Murtyor Mukshi Yamamratat Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushtivardhanam Urva Ruka Miva Bandanan Murtyor Mukshi Yamamratat Om Shanti 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 May the blessings of God and gurus be upon us all. I bow to you all. Thank you, everyone. Nice spending some time with you. <clears throat> and I hope you all have a good day. And talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.